this video, we're going to look at another uh, concept related to the, the physics of motion, and this is elapsed time. Now, elapsed time is a very simple concept. It is the amount of time that has elapsed, right? What does that exactly mean? So when something begins and when something ends, how much time passed? Passed, elapsed, how much time uh, transpired? Um, so so that's, that's what elapsed time is. It's really usually pretty simple to, 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 to measure with one, one minor exception. And that minor exception is when you get a clock reading instead of a stopwatch reading. So um, we, we will look at elapsed time as being the difference between the starting time and the ending time, also known as initial and final time. Time is uh, lowercase t as a rule. So we have t1 or t sub i. That's going to be the initial time. And then in the middle, you can have t2, t3, t4, t5, t6, whatever. All of these would be uh, interval times. And then at the end, you're going to have final time. And a lot of times, in most cases, in, in, in elementary and in, in beginning uh, physics, you're going to have an initial time and a final time, or you're going to have T2 or T sub F. So you're going to have those two times. Now, if it's a stopwatch, the smart thing to do is to reset it at the beginning of the event. So you hit the stopwatch, 30 seconds pass, so the elapsed time is 30 seconds. And so what that's going to look like is, uh, on a stopwatch, is you hit zero when you, know, you reset it, hit the start, it goes 45 seconds. So the elapsed time is 45. That's easy. If something starts on the clock, and, and you may say, uh, John began his walk at 2 o'clock. So that's a clock time. And, and we need to know if you're using military time or the AM, PM thing because that also has, has uh, an effect. So 2 o'clock would be the initial time. And he traveled until it was 4.15. So the, that's a F and that's a T. The elapsed time becomes the difference between the two times. So, so t, you can say t total, t elapsed, or just t, equals the final time minus the initial time. Another way to write that is to say t equals t sub 1, 2 minus t sub 1. Now, not hard. If you start at 2 o'clock and go to 4.15, Two hours and 15 minutes, easy enough. It only becomes problematic when you have to borrow in, in the situation. So that would look like if T sub F was 3, 15, and T sub I was 1, 25. So then t is equal to the final time, 3, 15, minus the initial time, 1, 25. Suddenly it's not as, as easy as we wish it were. Write this uh, vertically. So you have 3, 15, minus 1, 25. You have to borrow. Now, we're all accustomed to borrowing 9, but when we borrow on clocks, we're borrowing 60 minutes. So the, so the 3 becomes a 2, and then this becomes, instead of 15, 75. 75 minus 25 is 50. One minus, 2 minus 1 is 1. And so our answer is an hour and 50 minutes. Works for seconds the same way. And then you get the decimals for the seconds, and then you're borrowing tens. So that's it. The hardest part is when you have to borrow minutes. Otherwise, and you're using clock reading. If you're using a, a stopwatch, start at zero. It ends when it ends. That's your elapsed time. 
If you're doing a clock reading, however, you got the final clock time, the initial clock time, and you have to subtract. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. Uh, consider sharing this video with someone else who might also like it. And subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching.